Uh, something else that I really wanted to get your opinion on. Um, and, and it seems like the, the New York City mayor's race hasn't quite gotten the attention it deserves up until this point. Uh, obviously, we've had this um, national turmoil in the wake of um, President-elect Joe Biden's election over Donald Trump and all the madness that has ensued since then. Um, but one thing that really has recently brought attention back to the race is the entrance of former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. And we've kind of been going back on this show, Zach and I, on, you know, Yang's progressive bona fides. Is he really, um, you know, worth getting behind as a progressive or as a progressive movement? Um, is, are his ideas viable? Uh, would he sell out when he is eventually in power? These are conversations we've been having. And I just wanted to, um, you know, get your take on his on his entrance into this race, how you're thinking it will affect your candidacy, and also um, just whether or not you think his kind of signature issue of a universal basic income is something that could be successfully mm -hmm. implemented in New York City or should be successfully mm -hmm. implemented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are all really good questions. Thank you. So I'll say, um, you know, I think the there was a lot of fanfare around his entrance into the race last week. Um, I admit to um, there, the, you know, it was kind of low hanging fruit and, and some of us other candidates had a little fun with it. Um, uh, around kind of, you know, the uh, the statement that he made about not being in the city and, you know, can you imagine living in a two bedroom apartment and, you know, as someone who was living with three generations under one roof um, all through 2020, um, you know, it was, it just was too easy to not sort of poke a little fun it was at totally it. totally tone deaf for sure. Was, yeah. I, you know, but, but, but the reality of it is, you know, I feel kind of like welcome to the race, right? I, I really think that New Yorkers should have, particularly at this moment in time, given everything that we have sort of laid bare in 2020 in terms of the challenges, the structural and the systemic deep, the, you know, challenges that are so deeply rooted in the foundation of our country. Um, and the opportunities that we have in 2021 to actually put a stake in the ground and say, you know, the old playbook doesn't work. We've seen it. We've seen what that led to and we want something different. So I think New Yorkers deserve that, um, deserve that chance and that choice. Um, what I think is really important, though, is and, and, you know, and this is what I worry about, is that um, New Yorkers have a chance to hear from all of the candidates um, and be able to make informed choices, right? Um, there is this sort of danger of kind of like the media and the media is so complicit, I think, in um, perpetuating a lot of the status quo. Um, and so there's the danger of some of other candidates getting drowned out, um, even when they might have, and I'll speak to my, I'll, I'm gonna speak for myself. Um, you know, I think I have a, a very bold um, and transformative agenda and an unapologetic agenda and, um, you know, I, I do think that there's the possibility of some of that getting overshadowed by the stardom um, of some high profile candidates. I mean, he's not the only one. We've got some high profile candidates in the New York City race. Um, and so there's that sort of tension, I think. And, and you know, my hope is that um, that there will be an increased sort of movement, right? That the movement that we saw in 2021, the coalition of folks who's the, the uprisings that we saw in 2021, that those people will continue to lean in and that they will be, you know, that they'll apply a critical lens to the candidates' platforms um, and make some shrewd decisions. That being said, to your question about um, the UBI, you know, my, so, so guaranteed minimum income is a part of my platform. Mm -hmm. What I'll say about that is it's not a solution. I think it is a critical tool that we could and should be using to really transform the economy and to transform economic stability and to begin to move towards true equity and justice for communities. Um, I don't want it to be you know, um, misinterpreted as kind of like a silver bullet. Right? It's a step to sort of allow people to be able to live in dignity and provide for their families at the same time that we should really be overhauling the economic framework for New York City, right? We can make different choices about what we prioritize. Over the long term, we should be transitioning to budgets that really reflect our values, prioritize communities, establish a public bank, prioritize investments in local businesses, expand worker-owned cooperatives, really grow job training and transform education. Those are the things, those are the mechanisms um, that will sort of help dismantle the structures and systems that have led to the inequity, right? Um, but it's not, you know, I, I worry, that's another part, you know, I yeah. worry about this becoming like this flashy idea, but it's like, that's not the answer. People yeah, it's not need, a panacea, right? 
It's not a panacea. And people actually want to be able to hold down a job and be able to provide for their families. Like, you know, they don't want to sort of just rely on this, you know, guaranteed minimum income. But that's part of living in dignity is knowing that your 35 hours allows you to put food on the table. I, I totally agree with that. And I think the fact that you've included uh, a guaranteed income in your platform, in addition to so many other great kind of social services and things of that nature is really the, you know, the chord that I want to see struck more often. And instead of just kind of using it as a, a, a fix all where we can do away right. with the social safety net and just replace it with a, a basic income. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. It's a and terrible idea. <laughs> thank you for bringing some more nuance to that conversation because uh, I do appreciate the fact that Yang popularized a guaranteed income. I mean, I think it's a, it is an important part of the solution, but I mm -hmm. completely agree with your take, which is that it's not the whole solution. 